Good morning and God bless you. So good to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for the direction and the condition of our nation. We also want to remember our local community and region. Also, Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. This is the right time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. Thank you for calling us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Father, we pray about the condition, the direction of our nation. God, we pray for a Holy Ghost revival today, right now. Um, we ask it in Jesus' name. We also pray for our local community and region. Pray you'll continue to open up doors of utterance and influence. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven over this congregation. Pour out your favor. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, that you furnish each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all these things in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. Well, um, talking to Jesus this morning, I really felt like I wanted to do a short series starting this morning on boundaries. We have talked about this before, but it just seems like the more that I ruminate on this and chew on this, masticate on this, the bigger it becomes. It's just boundaries are a fact of life. And to you and I that are apostolic, or maybe you're watching this and have been watching these and you're not apostolic, you still have boundaries. Um, it's just that people that are apostolic have biblical and Holy Ghost directed boundaries. But boundaries are a fact of life, and they are absolutely so fundamental and so foundational to not just life, but the very, the very fiber and fabric of our existence. We were created by God with certain limitations and boundaries. And so we're going to do part one um, of boundaries here uh, this morning. We're going to start in the book of Genesis. We're going to start in Genesis chapter number three. And the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, or yes, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Well, this is actually going back to Genesis chapter number two. So let's look at this in Genesis chapter two, verse number 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Okay, now here comes, here comes the boundary. Here comes the, the perimeter. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, so... What the serpent, what the serpent is using to engage with Eve was something that was actually given the previous chapter, 
specifically to Adam. Eve was not even in existence at the time that this boundary was put into place. This is, this is critical um, for us in understanding the overall operation of the devil's uh, attempt to get us off track because although, although we don't have any type of understanding or it's not been revealed that there is a serpent that is even being used like this uh, in this entire narrative up until this point in Genesis 3 and 1. The serpent was all ears, and the serpent was paying absolute attention to this boundary, okay? This is all connected and, and is very, very important to our comprehension and understanding to the original premise for our purpose, okay? So the serpent was there in Genesis chapter 2, heard God give this boundary, this condition, this command to Adam. The serpent was there when Adam gave this to Eve. It was given to Adam. Adam gave it to Eve. And now here we are in Genesis 3 and 1. And this boundary, this commandment that God gave to Adam is the very thing that the serpent is here to challenge, okay? So just a little background there. Look at verse two. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She added touch it, and we know that Adam actually added that. He added that for the protection of his wife. Just a little, just a little rabbit trail that we're not going to go down, but I just wanted to say there's a rabbit trail right there. Neither shall we touch it. But in the original, it was the ingesting that they were, they were forbidden to ingest, to, to put it into your body, to, to put it into your being. to, And so Adam added, we're not even going to touch this as a means of protecting his wife. Let's continue here in Genesis 3. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. God said that if you violate this commandment, if you violate this boundary, then ye shall surely die. That was the one thing. And Satan diametrically opposed to the commandment of God. Ye shall not die. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is something that has reverberated for millennia and is still reverberating today. God made them male and female. No, there is a multiplicity of gender choices, et cetera, et cetera. We could go on all morning. I think you understand exactly what's going on here. For God does know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So God puts this commandment, this boundary in place. This boundary is extremely important, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's go back to Genesis chapter number 1 and... Let's look at verse number 26. Here we are on the sixth day of creation. Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Okay? This is God's original intent for Adam and Eve. Okay? Right here in verse 26, 27, and 28. 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So this is God's original intent. It appears that Adam would rule and reign over the entire earth with God. Adam would be the one that brings about this dominion, God being the invisible ruler over it all. But Adam plays an incredible role in this, in that he is he is the human agent that is going to bring about this dominion, subduance, replenishing the earth with God being the unseen ruler over it all. This is the job description. This is this is our purpose. This is God's plan for Adam and Eve. Okay? Now there is the placement of a condition, a boundary, a commandment that you can eat of any fruit of the trees that's here except one. And that boundary, that one tree, that one commandment has drawn the undivided full attention of the serpent. Now, now you understand why boundaries are critically important. Because here in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, it's wide open. It's the entirety of, of, of the world. You are going to have dominion. Um, this entire planet, you and I will rule and reign over this planet together. The only condition was a boundary. And it was a boundary of the forbidden. Now, I'm starting off with this. Uh, we're not going to be much longer, but you have to understand that in the face of understanding great privilege, calling, purpose, comprehension of why we're here and what we're doing and all of the blessings, the benefits, everything, that you have to learn to coexist with a boundary. You have to learn you have to learn that there's some things or some thing that you cannot have. This is this is a fundamental basic as you're looking these are just these are just the building blocks a principle for existence and purpose for Adam and Eve that they have absolute wide open. I mean you're going to take dominion over everything. But there's one thing, and you have to learn to coexist with that one thing. I think it is important to note, we've already mentioned this, but I think it's important to note that Adam, understanding the limitations of Eve, strengthened, he attempted to strengthen that boundary. That's why he said, neither touch it. God never mentioned that to Adam. Adam inserted that to strengthen the boundary because by, by crossing over into this boundary and, and 
becoming subjected to partaking of this, we sabotage everything. Everything can be sabotaged or ruined or destroyed by violating this one boundary. And it was, this is a boundary that was instituted by God, strengthened by Adam, and it becomes the one thing that Adam, or pardon me, that the serpent is presenting to Eve and lies about it, absolute, diametrically opposed from the word of God, absolute a lie. You have to learn to live with boundaries. And if you, if you do successfully live within boundaries, there is no end to the growth, the potentiality, supernatural prosperity, blessing. And that's, you know, that's just a, that's just a byproduct of living within the word of God and these, uh, these boundaries. It is the absolute will of God. So I'm just introducing this here this morning that this is a, this is a fundamental foundational premise of everything. You have to learn to live and coexist, maybe even within eyesight of the forbidden. There has to be that in order for us to be fully human and fully used and blessed of God. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll go to part two tomorrow morning and we'll look forward to seeing you then. God bless you.